What's up guys, welcome back to another video. With all the hubbub surrounding Apple's announcement that they're going to start making their own ARM-based CPUs for Macintosh computers, I thought today I'd give my thoughts on this and take a look back at Apple's last architecture transition, and maybe in closing, take a look at what it might mean for the computer industry as a whole. So without further ado, let's get to it. So as you're probably aware, at WWDC this year, Apple officially announced that they'd start making ARM-based Macs equipped with Apple-designed CPUs and GPUs. Since 2006, Macs and PCs have both used CPUs from Intel built on the x86 architecture. But before 2006, Apple Macs used PowerPC chips based on IBM's power architecture. This RISC-based architecture was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best Intel had to offer and in quite a few cases actually surpass it up until around 2003 to 4 when the G5 line of CPUs were released. These G5 chips were far too power hungry and they ran way too hot to ever put in a laptop, which meant that Apple had to stick with the G4 CPUs in their notebooks, and they were also unable to hit their promised clock speed of 3 GHz in the Power Mac G5. So, Apple decided to transition all of its Macintosh computers to Intel CPUs. There were other factors that played into this, but that's not really the important part here. What matters is how the changeover was handled. The first version of OS X to support Intel chips was Mac OS X 10.4 Tiger. It had all of the code built in for both PowerPC and x86, so it could run on either. Just like Mac OS 11, Big Sur has all the code built in for x86 and ARM chips. Now, the original release of 10.4.0 was a little rough on the Intel-based Macs back in the day, but Apple quickly released updates and patches so that just a few months after launch it was running almost perfectly. Implications were another story though. For those of you who don't know, software code usually has to be wrote for the specific architecture that it will run on. When Apple first started selling Intel-based Macs, the existing PowerPC machines actually had way more software available for them than the brand new Intel Macs did. To help make up for this, Apple built Rosetta, which is a real-time translator of sorts that interprets the code from the PowerPC apps in real time so you can run them on an Intel processor. And Apple's doing the exact same thing today with Rosetta 2. It'll translate the x86 instructions from existing apps in real time to ARM instructions. The downside of this approach is usually performance though. Interpreting code like this tends to be pretty slow, sometimes so slow that it's almost unusable, but back during the PowerPC Intel switch, the increase in performance of the Intel CPUs was so great that most PowerPC apps ran just as fast on the Intel machines as they did on PowerPC Macs. There were exceptions of course, but on a whole it actually worked out really well for Apple. Now, whether they'll be able to replicate this today remains to be seen, but personally, I have my doubts. Part of the reason this worked so well for PowerPC is because PowerPC is a RISC architecture. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing, and while it's too complicated of a subject to get into in this video, and there's also a lot of factors that have an effect on it, generally speaking, the less instructions there are in a given architecture, the easier it is to interpret them. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but point is, interpreting x86 is usually pretty slow. So we'll have to wait and see how Apple manages to pull this off. During the transition to Intel, Apple also announced the universal binary. This was a single binary or application developers could compile they would run on both PowerPC and Intel machines with no speed penalty on either. These worked extremely well actually, and you can still run in universal binaries on modern versions of macOS. For the switch to ARM, Apple released Universal 2, which is an extension of sorts onto the original universal binary standard that will allow an app to be built for Intel and ARM machines. This is probably how most Mac software will be compiled in the coming years. A bit of a side note though, Apple has never actually removed the ability to build universal binaries with PowerPC support. It's actually completely possible to build a single universal binary that would run on PowerPC, Intel, and the upcoming ARM Macs, though I kind of doubt anyone actually ever will. Hardware is another thing to consider, and there's a lot of duality here. Around the time of the Intel switch, Apple made several Power Mac G5 computers equipped with Intel Pentium 4 CPUs so they could test run code but they never actually shipped a Mac with a Pentium CPU to consumers. 
kind of like the Mac Mini with Apple's A12Z SoC. Personally, I doubt we'll ever see a mainstream Mac computer with an A12Z SoC. My guess is it's just more of a testing thing, but time will tell. Another similarity on the hardware front though is the PowerBook and Power Mac. You see, right before the switch to Intel, Apple updated the PowerBook with the better display and GPU. And they updated the Power Mac G5 with a liquid-cooled twin dual-core CPU setup that would prove to be faster than almost any Mac but the Mac Pro for about five years. And today, Apple just refreshed the MacBook Pro with a 16-inch display with a higher resolution and the latest RDNA-based GPUs from AMD. The Mac Pro just received a major refresh too, with 28 cores, twin die GPUs, and up to one and a half terabytes of RAM. Time will tell, but I suspect this to be the last Intel-based refresh of these two product lines, and Apple may have just as hard of a time surpassing the performance of the 28-core Mac Pro as they did surpassing the Power Mac G5 Quad back in 2006. The final side of this all is the time frame. Apple released its first Intel-based Macs in the beginning of 2006 and said the transition to Intel would take two years, just like they have for the ARM transition. But they actually ended up having all of their product lines transition to Intel in that same year. But for most of 2006, I would say the experience overall was better off on PowerPC. But by 2007, a lot of software had been ported to universal binaries and the major advantages of the Switch were starting to show. By 2008, PowerPC support was kind of starting to dry up already, and by 2009, support from Apple ended officially. After the launch of the Intel-based Macs, PowerPC devices only received one more major release of OS X, which was 10.5 Leopard, and I hope that doesn't become the case with the ARM transition. But when Apple says it'll take two years and they don't really elaborate, it doesn't fill me with a ton of confidence. Personally, I hope that means that it will take two years to transition all of their product lines over to ARM, and we'll see something like four or maybe even five years of software support for existing Intel machines, but time will tell. It'll also be interesting to see how this change spills out into the rest of the industry, since people tend to follow Apple's lead on these kind of things. Microsoft has tried and failed repeatedly to transition Windows users over to ARM-based machines. A lot of the reason they failed, I think, was due to the fact that Windows on ARM, up until very recently with the Surface Pro X, didn't support any x86 applications. And even now that it does support them, they run really, really slow. So it'll be interesting to see how Apple manages to pull that off. Personally though, I hope this sparks a transition in the PC industry as well. x86 is a pretty old architecture. And it would be very interesting, in my opinion, to see the PC industry transition to ARM. Intel, as far as I know, has never made an ARM CPU, while well, AMD has been cranking them out for servers since 2013. If this transition were to start, led by AMD, we could see AMD become as dominant in the coming decade as Intel has been in the last. So TLDR, I'm looking forward to this. Hopefully Apple's clever enough to pull it off and not leave Intel users in the dust quite as quickly as they did their PowerPC users. Either way though, things are about to get interesting. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, get subscribed, and ring the bell so you get notified when I post new videos. And I will see you guys in the next one.